massive layoffs have been rolling through corporate America with Gen Z and millennials feeling the brunt of these layoffs. So numerous polls are being conducted weekly asking, if you were given a promotion, would you accept it? If you were offered to work from home or return to the office, which would you prefer? And the answers that Gen Z and the millennials are giving, they're being misunderstood. Welcome to Counterthought. I've been debating about talking about this issue for a couple of weeks now, um, but I feel like now is appropriate time. So for those of you who do not know, my own personal story here in the past couple of months is that I, myself in my, my personal life, not the podcast life, but my personal life, I was laid off in December. I worked for a huge corporation that's part of uh, the Fortune 10, and I was laid off. I was laid off after 10 plus years with that organization. I was laid off at the end of my first year in a new role. And it wasn't just me. It was me and five other members of my team got laid off, including the vice president that hired me. So as I talk about this topic in this episode, I know full well what the layoffs are doing to Gen Z and millennials. I am a millennial myself, 37 years old. Right, I am right there smack dab in the middle of the Gen Y millennial generation. So I don't talk about this topic as if I don't have any kind of firsthand knowledge of what is actually going on here. You may have seen in the headlines, in the news, recent news, that there are massive layoffs currently happening here in America. And we've heard about these layoffs before, right? We hear about it in the tech sector because that always seems to, to balloon up and then shrink back down. We hear about it in healthcare. We hear about how they're struggling to find um, healthcare staff, especially nurses, to be able to be to to fill the hospitals and care for the patients. While simultaneously, um, hospital systems, mainly, and then also um, payers and other provider systems are laying off employees. However, these large corporations are also turning record profits. Some people might even point to, you know, like the S&P 500 and their average saying, oh, look, the stock market is going up. Wall Street is doing well. When really those, when really the S&P 500 is being carried by six, seven, eight, maybe major stocks. So it's not telling the full story. The average, you can hide numbers, you can hide the truth in averages. But these massive layoffs that have been going on throughout America over the past couple of months, and it's always at the end of the year, Right. There's always a layoff at the end of the year because all these corporations, these public corporations are beholden to, you know, they're, they're grabbed by the balls of the, the market analyst. And if they don't hit their numbers, they don't hit their projections. They don't hit the projections that they, that they give at the start of the fiscal year. If they don't hit them by the end of the year, then their stock price is going to go down and then their capitalization, you know, will decrease and so on and so forth. So that's why I was laid off. It wasn't for performance. And again, it wasn't just me. It was me and five other individuals, including the vice president who hired me, including my vice president. We were part of a workforce reduction at the end of the year. And I believe, cannot convince me otherwise, that it was because the corporation was looking at their numbers and said, dang, we are at risk of missing the, our projections for this year. So we need to start you know, cutting costs. So they went through and, and started asking, hey, where can, where, can we, where can we trim the fat? You know, And my name came up and five other members of my team, their numbers came up. And that is where Gen Z, or that is what Gen Z and millennials realize. There is no you know, times of going back to the baby boomer generation or the silent generation before them where you had company loyalty. I had been at the company that I worked for for 10 years. You know, so that's in this day and age, based on the current trends where you're supposed to be job hopping every two years, I should have job top five times. But, you know, I stayed at the company. You could call that loyalty, I guess. But, you know, the job I had was working well for me. And then so that was really why I was staying. But there is no such thing today as company or corporate loyalty. Gen Z and millennials understand that. 
Generation X and the baby boomers that still remain in the workforce do not really understand that fully. And that is why there is this misunderstanding of Gen Z and millennials when they are surveyed. Hey, would you rather work from home or return to the office? Hey, would you accept a promotion if offered or would you rather stay in the position that you are, maybe max out the pay for that position and have a better work-life balance? There is a disconnect and a misunderstanding between what the younger generations, Gen Z and millennials want, which accounts for over 50% of today's workforce, and then what the management and upper management want and the executives, which is now being uh, dwindling down for the baby boomers and is predominantly Generation X. Which brings me to the PBD podcast, the Patrick Bet David podcast. I was listening to their episode that they recorded, I think it was a couple of days ago. And they were going through just some, you know, some headlines. And it was this study or this poll that was taken of Gen Z and millennial workers asking them. One of the questions it asked them was about a promotion. If you were offered a promotion, would you take it? And more than 40% of those surveyed said they would not. Now, the take on the PBD podcast by not just Patrick Bet David, but by his, his co-hosts, where that, oh, it's because they don't want the responsibility. They don't want the responsibility. And their argument was, well, you better embrace the responsibility that would be thrust upon your shoulders with a promotion. Because whenever it does come to layoffs, what's going to happen? They're going to go to the leadership, the management, and ask, hey, we got to reduce headcount. Is there one name on your team that you can give me that you, you could say you don't need? So that's their argument, a reason why you accept the promotion. However, for Gen Z and millennials, we have seen these layoffs. We have seen there is no loyalty from the companies. We have seen and experienced firsthand that corporations just see you as a number. They don't see you as, oh, look at Brian Kletter over here. You know, he's been he's been with us for 10 years, going on 11 years. We should, you know, we should probably keep him. He's been a good employee. He's always met or exceeded expectations, yada, yada, yada. They don't care about that. They don't care about that. You are a number. And with your number or embedded within that number, contained within your number, is your salary. There are countless kit TikToks, countless videos of people recording themselves being laid off, you know, and they are a top performer. These corporations don't care. You can be laid off either because you don't perform, which is more so like a firing, or you could be laid off because maybe you are actually costing the company too much money and they can they feel like they could backfill that position at a later date and pay someone less because they have less experience and haven't maxed out their pay range. That is what Gen Z and millennials like me, we understand. We There is no loyalty to us, so why would we be loyal to the companies that we work for? Sure, we want to do good work. You know, We want to max out our pay, but we don't want to uh, have this commitment to a company who has no commitment to us. And other polls have shown or have been asking, you know, would you rather work from home or return to work? Because there has been this push over the past year, you know, everything shut down again for the pandemic in 2020, March of 2020. So we are now four full years, four full years of going to remote work. However, Corporations, larger larger companies, Bank of America, this was cited in the Patrick Bet David PVD podcast episode as well. Bank of America is sending like threatening letters trying to get their people to come back to the office, I guess back to their their corporate headquarters, um, you know, those locations, because if you go to a branch office, people are obviously they're working, but this I guess is more for the corporate employees, people who don't work at the branches, sending threatening letters like, hey, you need to get in the office. And I watched a video myself on TikTok of some guy who, who works in construction, you know, seeming really upset about it, talking about, oh, you got to be in the office, got to maintain culture, talked about culture, culture, culture. And that's what these companies are going to tell you. Oh, it's about culture. When, you, when you're in the office and rubbing shoulders, there's more productivity. There, there's nothing that shows that there is actually more productivity being in the office. You might be, they might be trying to trick you that that's the case. Because I was just doing a quick Google search in preparation for this episode, and all these all these polls are showing, hey, more productivity in the office, more productivity, more productivity. 
okay. But do you remember how in 2020 and 2021 and 2022 and the first half going into 2023, all these polls, all these studies showing, wow, when we converted to work from home to remote work, production stayed the same or increased actually. The mental mindset of our employees, the work-life balance, you know, increased. But now there's this push to get people back in the office and all of a sudden these polls polls, quote unquote, are telling us that that actually productivity increases in the office. I don't believe that. I was I was a remote worker, but I was a remote worker well prior to the pandemic. I've been working remote since 2014. So for 10 years, I've been working remote. And the company that I worked for, more than 50% of the workforce works remotely. So these companies may be saying it's about culture, but it's not. And if it is about culture for a specific company, it's because that company has failed to adapt and adjust to the work from home, remote work environment of this day and age. They have failed to adjust and failed to manage and promote the culture and maintain the culture in their organization. This is not just something blanket across all of these companies. It is only specific to the companies who are struggling with culture. That is only applicable to them, and it's not applicable as, as just like a generality across the board. You can't just say, oh, blanket statement. It's all about culture for everybody. Everybody struggles to maintain culture because that's not true. There was a culture at my former company, and that's because they, they knew how to do it. So these corporations are telling you it's about culture and it's about productivity, but it's not. It is not. These corporations are are getting rec- are experiencing record profits, most of them. However, they're still doing layoffs. So again, that goes back to the whole number, right? You are just a number. Remember that. But what I think is really going on here, the true reason, the true reason for these claims of culture and productivity and you have to return to the office. It's not about that. The real reason they are saying these things, because again, a lot of companies went to remote work in March of 2020. So we've gone to 2021, 2022, 2023, and almost coming up onto March of 2024. So three full years, almost four full years. But now they want to make the change. And you want to know why, why this is? The reason why, the primary reason why, because I believe there are two reasons. One reason is control. The upper management, they want to have more control. Those who have failed to to adapt and failed to find ways to maintain the culture and control and oversight of their workforce, of their teams. They want people in the office so they can walk around like days of old, peer over your shoulder, pop by your cubicles, poke their head into your office and see what you're working on. Gather a team up real quick in a little huddle room. Those were all popular. Gather the team together and and just have a quick discussion or, or, or another meeting. So that's one reason, control. Visibility. And again, this is a lack of, because of a lack of adjustment on by these individuals in these companies, not necessarily because there's any proof that shows any increase in, in productivity. <clears throat> and the main reason, I believe, is it all comes back to the money. It all comes back to the money. And where are these large companies losing money? In their commercial real estate. They're losing money on their empty office buildings. If you are a large corporation, those who are um, you know, having these large layoffs, and you signed a lease for a building, or maybe you outright purchased a building, finished paying it off, and you are used to, ha- and say worldwide, you have 100,000, 200,000 employees. And you're sitting there looking at your office building in, on the West Coast, and then you have another one on the East Coast, or maybe you're, they're all on, you know, in one region of the country. And an office building can hold 5,000, 10,000 people. The next one can hold another five to 10, so on and so forth. And most of those employees were sent home in the pandemic three, almost now four years ago. And you've tried to get them back. You want them back because why? Because you have empty office space. You are paying millions of dollars, millions of dollars, not only for the lease of these buildings, 
for the construction of these buildings, but also for the, the property insurance that you're paying for these buildings. And these corporations are trying to find a way to recoup and justify the expense that they are now, that is now on the books and depreciating when they are getting no use from it. In New York City, this is a New York Times report. In New York City, office space costs on average about 16000 per year per employee. And before the pandemic, a lot of these companies, they signed 10-year leases, 15-year leases. Under the expectation that there was going to be growth in their company, growth in the headcounts, right? More and more hires. And then all of a sudden, pandemic happened and that changed. So now these 10, 15 year leases, you know, there is now seven, 12 years remaining on these leases. And they've invested millions of dollars or in a way to try to entice people to return to the office. They have now spent millions of dollars, thousands of dollars per employee to lure these employees back. You may have heard that they're offering like new incentive plans to get people to return to the office. That is how desperate these corporations are. And it's not because of culture. The primary driver, I believe, is because they have these empty office buildings and the executives cannot stand it. These desks are empty. The cafeterias are empty. The break rooms are empty. They see the empty desks and they can't handle it. They're supposed to have 5,000 people in this location and they're not there. They are at home. So while they're reimbursing you for maybe your home internet and for you to be able to you know, work through a VPN and using your Wi-Fi and everything else, they are also paying for the rent of that office space. Again, this report says in New York City, this is New York City, obviously very expensive, but Sixteen thousand dollars per employee per year. I'm not really good at quick math, but let's say you had two thousand employees that are supposed to be in an office building, and you're paying sixteen thousand per year. I'm pretty sure that's going to be about thirty-two million dollars per year that you're losing because people are not in the office utilizing that space. And why don't Gen Z millennials want to return to the office? Obviously, there's multiple reasons. Better work-life balance. There's no commitment from the corporation, so why commit to them? Also, why do the wear and tear and do the commute whenever you can be just as productive or actually uh, log in more hours because you're not spending time in our round-trip commute every single day? Right? So where is the incentive? There is no incentive. And the executive management, which again is baby boomers are going out, Gen Xers are coming in, already in position for these executive management positions. Those who do not adapt to what Gen Z and millennials want are going to be left behind. If they do not adapt to being open to remote work, flexible hours, they're going to get left behind. These, these individuals, these em- the people, the Gen Zers, the millennials, they're going to look elsewhere. They're not going to work for a company that doesn't meet their needs. And with being a combined more than 50% of the workforce, they have the leverage, right? They have the leverage for a lot of these corporate jobs, whether it's in tech or healthcare or staffing agencies and, and other industries. They have the leverage. And those who refuse to adapt, to understand where these where these people like myself are coming from, these corporations, these the, the management level are going to be left behind. So what I am advocating for, and this is this goes beyond just whether you want to work from home or accept a promotion, there needs to be a fundamental shift in how large businesses, large corporations and industries treat their employees. Capitalism in America, we love to promote capitalism. We love to promote capitalism, right? How it has impacted the world and done so much good for the world. However, we are suffering from a lot of greed 
in capitalism. Capitalism is great, but greed is not. The company that laid me off posted like $30 billion in profit, yet cut thousands of people, including myself. We see that in other industries, 5,000 people being laid off, while also that same company posting billions of dollars in profit. There is greed. There is greed across multiple industries, not just corporations. There is greed within uh, residential real estate and so on and so forth. Greed within healthcare. Capitalism is great. Capitalism breeds competition. Competition is supposed to um, make improvement upon products and services while also bringing down the cost for those products and services. However, the greed means that people are paying more to live. People are not being rewarded for their work. Getting a 1% to 2% raise or a 3% raise. That is why people are job hopping, especially Gen Z. If you're going to be job hopping every two years to be able to keep up at, at level or above the level of, of inflation and cost of living because the corporations, the businesses that you work for, they're not going to give you that um, promotion or raise or bonus to keep up with it. So capitalism, for, for as wonderful as it is, as long as there is greed, that is the underbelly of capitalism. And these corporations, they need to adapt to what we, the workers, want because we are the workforce. They need to adapt what Gen Z and millennials want in order for them to survive. And the argument that we are making is we want to take better care of ourselves while also being rewarded and seen as a person instead of just a number. Hi, I'm Brian Kletter, the creator and host of the Counterthought Podcast. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to like it and then also check out these two videos and subscribe to the channel. For more daily content from me, you can find me on Instagram at CounterthoughtCEO and the official Counterthought Instagram page at counter underscore thought. Thank you for watching and spread the word.